a person who changed my life forever. Kathy O'Brien, thank you. I'd like to thank you for coming out here this evening to arm yourselves with comprehensive understanding of mind control because knowledge is our only defense against mind control. Knowledge is our only defense against it, which is exactly why it's being, in, being suppressed under the 1947 National Security Act. There's a small handful of criminals that are in control of our government and in control of our country that are in control of our information and they're suppressing pertinent facts such as mind control and hiding under the National Security Act. That's national security that's threatening the security of our nation when it allows for crimes against humanity like tortures to continue. When it allows for mass mind control mechanisms to go into place through social engineering that keeps us all warring with each other and not really understanding exactly what it is that's going on in our world. We all formulate our thoughts, our opinions, and ultimately our actions based on what we know. And when our knowledge base is altered, we're left to superstition, conjecture, and ultimately fear. And fear is a strong basis for mind control, whether it's a kind of mind control that is the mass mind control over a whole society, or if it's the kind of absolute robotic mind control that I experienced under MK Ultra on a White House Pentagon level. I feel very fortunate to have recovered from my mind control victimization and to have a clear view of what's actually going on behind the scenes of what Adolf Hitler and George Bush termed a new world order. It makes perfect sense to me what I'm seeing in society today and the truth that set me free from the absolute mind control that I experienced can also set you free from any kind of fear that you're experiencing through what is happening in our society and in our world today. It can also free you from any kind of trauma that you've experienced in the past. It can also free you from information control that has left you wondering what in the world is going on today. I'd like to provide a, a comprehensive view of exactly what mind control entails based on uh, my victimization in mind control and also my recovery from it because the mind expanding abilities that I gained in my recovery process are abilities that each and every one of you would be able to use to gain a better understanding to know what's going on in the world and empower you to make a positive difference in your own lives and in your own walk of life, in your own society, your own family, and affect those that you love as well. In 1957, I was born into a multi-generational incest-based family. My father had been sexually abused his mother was a prostitute. My mother had been sexually abused and her father was military intelligence and ran a blue Masonic lodge. Um, I'm certainly not going to be suggesting that all Masons are bad just because there are many who have an ulterior agenda that is formulated on abuse and anyone that I name 
is not to suggest that any particular group is responsible for what's going on in the world today. It's just not that simple. There's good and bad in everything, and it weaves um, in and out of society. And in, in my situation, I thought that the whole world was involved in abuse. And as a very young child, I had hoped that there was some place in the world where people didn't abuse their children. I thought that perhaps that could actually happen because that's what I had, what I felt in, in my heart. And yet, with my whole environment saturated and my view was narrow to my own environment, I lost hope that there was a place where people didn't abuse each other. The sexual abuse that I endured as a child began at a very early age. And it was before I could, uh, before I could actually think to understand that my father's sexual abuse was bad. I couldn't judge morally what he was doing was wrong in any way whatsoever. But I did endure the pain and suffocation of his abuse just the same. And my body automatically responded to that pain and to that suffocation by developing a disorder which is known as dissociative identity disorder. This disorder was formally termed multiple personality disorder. And the um, International Society for the Study of Dissociation has finally come out with better information on how to recover from trauma and have redefined the disorder as dissociative identity disorder because multiple personality disorder is a misnomer. I didn't develop multiple personalities. I had one personality that was just totally shattered from the abuse. When trauma occurs that is too horrible to comprehend, the mind compartmentalizes that abuse. So by compartmentalizing off that abuse, the rest of the mind can function normally as though nothing had happened. This is now professionally defined, this disorder is, as the mind's sane defense to trauma too horrible to comprehend. It's not something that as a very, very young child I thought to develop and, and used as a, as a psychological protective mechanism. Instead, it's what my brain automatically did in order to deal with the extensive abuse that I was experiencing. My father may not have been aware of the effects on my brain that his abuse was causing. Not until much later, when his sexual abuse used as a, expanded into, um, into child pornography. He was supplementing the family income with proceeds from child pornography he was making of me. And this, this child pornography was being sold through the local Michigan Mafia child pornography ring. Well, back then, this was Bef just right around the um, age of six, so this was like now into the early 60s. And they, the, a local politician was actually sanctioning this child pornography ring in order to target children like myself for MK Ultra Mind Control. <laughs> 